In one of the most seemingly remote locations in the old world, an extremely ancient, proud, and extensive civilization has stood for thousands of years, influencing neighboring islands, nations, even entire continents, whose legacy still lives on directly and indirectly all over the world. Tamil is considered a classical language in the same manner as Latin, Chinese, or Aramaic, meaning that it can be traced back in its intelligible form thousands of years, at least two centuries before Christ, one of the oldest attested languages in South Asia. With most of the ancient texts in the north written in Sanskrit, although in the south, Tamil was the secondary lingua franca of the region, effectively making them equivalent to the Greeks of South Asia. Evidence of Tamil traders has been found as far as ancient China, East Africa, Egypt, and many of the surrounding regions, and various empires of South, and yes, even Southeast Asia had Tamils at the helm. But how did the Tamils even get there in the first place, and what are the origin and evolution of this people group? Evidence suggests that the first humans to ever inhabit the land that is now known as southern India were likely similar to the diminutive dark-skinned islanders in the Andamans and North Sentinel Island, referred to as Negritos by some, with other archaic Eurasians intermixing some tens of thousands of years ago to create the Vedoid phenotype. As mentioned in my video over the Dravidians as a whole, the Dravidian family almost certainly has its origins in southwest Eurasia, likely modern-day Iran, with the early Dravidian migrants to South Asia creating the Harappan or Indus Valley civilization before their conquest by the Indo-Aryans from the north. This pushed the Dravidians further and further south, although some pockets have remained in northeast India, Bangladesh, and even Pakistan, although the Brahui are very genetically similar to the neighboring Iranian-speaking groups rather than the Dravidians of South India. There are four major Dravidian-speaking groups, that being the Telugu, Kannada, Malayali from Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and Kerala respectively, and although the Telugu are a bit more numerous in South Asia, the Tamils are perhaps the most iconic and well-known. Haplogroups considered native to the Indian subcontinent are mostly referring to clades that existed before the migration of the Yamnaya and Proto-Indo-Aryans who brought haplogroup R1a from the Eurasian steppes, which is why R1a is dominant not only in northern India but also parts of Central Asia and most of Eastern Europe, not indicating a close genetic relation but merely showing a common paternal ancestor. Haplogroup R2, H, and L predate the Indo-Aryans and are the most common among Dravidians and particularly Tamil populations. As I've mentioned many times in past videos, because of generations upon generations of intensive intermixing, race and genetics in South Asia is much more of a spectrum than anywhere else on Earth, although some groups like the Advasi and Dardic peoples, if compared side by side, have literally almost nothing in common genetically, showing the extreme complexity of the subject, although most people belonging to the Indo-Aryan, Dravidian, and Austroasiatic ethno-linguistic groups do share a significant gene pool and cluster together due to their isolation and miscegenation, albeit on a much looser scale than other groups. The only modern group in southern India that is known to predate the Dravidians in this region is the small, isolated tribes of Sri Lanka known as the Veda, the indigenous race of Sri Lanka, and possibly even further north in southern India as well at one point, although the Tamil migration quickly dominated this group of archaic hunter-gatherers, and they lived this isolated, primitive lifestyle for many millennia up until relatively recently. One of the first real Tamil empires or substantial national consolidation among the Tamil people would have been the Cholas who established a dynasty 300 years before Christ spanning the bulk of what we would now refer to as southern India today, highly correlating with current Dravidian inhabited territory including all of Sri Lanka and the Maldives at one point. Their territorial influence, however, was massive, with ancient Tamil merchants reaching Bengal, Malaysia, Sumatra, and other parts of Southeast Asia, and in the process, large numbers of Tamils and other southern Indians settled in this region, showing a very male-biased pattern of settlement typical of conquest, establishing many Indian-style Hindu empires, not unlike those seen through the Greek conquest of Southwest Asia. These Hindu kingdoms would of course eventually fall to Buddhist and later Islamic regimes, although the South Indian, and more specifically Tamil, influence on this region is still felt in the linguistics, culture, and genetics of the modern people, with around 5 to 15% of the gene pool of Thailand, Cambodia, and parts of Austronesia being traced back to the Dravidians of the subcontinent. 
In Sri Lanka, the situation is complicated by the arrival of the Sinhalese or Singhalese, an Indo-Aryan speaking ethnicity that are essentially the result of mass migration from northern India to the island, particularly the Bengalis, Gujaratis, and Marathis. Although, rather than replacing the previous Dravidian population, the Aryans intermixed with them, and for this reason, the Sri Lankan Tamils and Sinhalese are very closely related, with Tamils being the closest ethnicity genetically to the Sinhalese, other than the Bengalis. There has also been a minor genetic flow into the Sri Lankan Sinhalese population from neighboring Southeast Asia in the past thousand years, giving them more Eastern Eurasian admixture than most groups in South Asia, which is also derivative from the original Bengali migrants. And although sources differ significantly, it is known that not only did the Sinhalese gain a significant proportion of the genome and culture from the original Sri Lankan Tamils, but the Tamils of Sri Lanka have likewise been heavily affected by this migration as well. In this graph over the genetic makeup of various ethnic groups of Sri Lanka, you can see that the genetic differences are not huge, with the exception of the Berger and Sri Lankan Malay communities, who have much larger proportions of European and Southeast Asian admixture respectively, naturally as a result of migration from these alien regions. Although over the generations there has been heavy intermixing with native Sri Lankans to the point where phenotypic differences are nearly negligible for some. These are also highly heterogeneous groups, and religion may play some part in this as well, with many burghers integrating into the Sinhalese Christian community, especially as of late, and religious conversion between groups, although rare, is not unheard of. While other areas of South India, such as Kerala and Karnataka, were heavily involved mostly with those from Western Eurasia, particularly the Persians, Arabs, Syrians, and even African groups like the Horn Africans at one point, the Tamils had mostly set their sights to the east, where across the Bay of Bengal lied one of the most heavily populated civilizations yet to be fully explored by the outside world. This is the reason for the aforementioned large cultural links between the Tamils and East Southeast Asia, as nearly all written indigenous scripts used by the Khmer, Thai, Mon, Burmese, Javanese, and many others in the region are derivative of the Tamil Brahmic alphabet, which of course is derivative from that found in northern India, derivative of Syriac, derivative of Phoenician, which is the same source that Europeans get their alphabet from. And although the cultural link across the Bay of Bengal was stunted after the Islamization of the Malays and Indonesians, this wasn't the end of the Tamil influence on this area. Hundreds of years after the fall of the Chola dynasty, everyone's most beloved group of the British strolled into town. Well, everyone's most beloved group to hate on, that is. But you don't need me to explain to you the British Raj or their eventual takeover of the Malay Peninsula and Sri Lanka from the Portuguese and Dutch, but after their incorporation, there was a bit of a reinvigoration of the overseas Tamil communities. The British saw the recruitment of thousands upon thousands of ethnic Tamils from both the Raj and Ceylon, their name for the Sri Lankan colony at the time, and for this reason, the bulk of overseas Indian descended communities in South Africa, Malaysia, and Singapore are indeed of Tamil descent, although the situation is a bit more complex than this. Of the nearly 4 million South Asian descendants in Malaysia and Singapore, the bulk are ethnically Tamil of the Hindu faith, but there has been extensive intermixing between other groups that arrived in the area, particularly those from southern India, as well as historic intermixing between Tamil Muslims and Malays, and in more recent times, intermixing between Indians and the Chinese of these countries, quickly becoming the largest multi-ethnic population in urban areas. Perhaps not so coincidentally, the Tamils of Malaysia and Singapore are heavily overrepresented not only in the upper brackets of the socio-economic spectrum, but also the lowest, although on average Indians in these countries are the richest racial groups, but the high economic disparities is very reminiscent of the caste system back in India. There has also been heavy influence of Tamil culture in Fiji, the Indo-Caribbean community of Guyana, Trinidad, and elsewhere, as well as the indo masquerine population of the islands of Mauritius and Reunion, with these latter South Asian groups being more of a fusion of both North, East, South, and West Indian people and culture, not really being traced back to only one group. So it does bring up the issue of whether each of these communities are an extension of the Tamil nation, or if they all stand on their own, having created their own divergent cultures. 
Strangely enough, the British also brought Tamil workers from India to the highlands of Ceylon, where they were considered culturally distinct from the native Ceylonese Tamils, although some do consider themselves to be a part of the same people, and similarly, the Tamil-speaking Muslims of Sri Lanka, or Moors as they were branded by the Portuguese, are sometimes considered a part of the greater Tamil nation, but the Moors actually consider themselves to be Arab descendants from ancient migrants, and genetic studies partially back this up for some Moors, although other Moor families are the result of conversion from other groups. The Sri Lankan civil war and ethnic conflict between the Tamil-populated north and Sinhalese-populated south has also created a new wave of the Tamil diaspora, headed predominantly to Northern America and Western Europe. And in fact, it's estimated that around a third of the Sri Lankan Tamil population has fled the country in the past several decades. All in all, there are easily over 80 million people of Tamil ancestry across the world today, closer to 90 million when taking mixed breeds into account, placing them on par with the number of Italian descendants worldwide, with the largest number being in India, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, South Africa, and Singapore. Although it's noteworthy that there's also a very large Tamil population in the Indian territory of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in Southeast Asia, making up the third largest group after Bengali and Hindi speakers. Religiously, the Tamils are similar to most other Indian populations, predominantly Hindu with a large Muslim and smaller Christian minority, although many of the Tamil-speaking Islamic groups such as the Sri Lankan Moors or the Labais of India claim Arab or Middle Eastern descent, while the Christians are predominantly the product of European, but not necessarily British missionary work in the area, most notably the Germans, with Tamil Nadu now having the largest Lutheran population in all of Asia. The Tamils are definitely a group I believe more in the Western world should learn about, arguably being one of the apex civilizations of the East and one of the more interesting modern ethno-linguistic groups in the area. So please let me know your thoughts on the ancient and modern Tamil nation, the migrants that produce the various overseas communities that are of great interest to many, and for today's poll, let me know another Dravidian population you'd like to learn more about. And as always, thanks for watching everyone, this has been Mason. And I'll see you next time.